combo box is like a text box except it has a little drop down arrow that when you click on it in this example if I created a combo box for my part numbers and it was based upon my book project table see there's all my part numbers back to my form here when I clicked on that arrow it would list all the part numbers so that way when I enter in a new order here a book order I can click on the drop down arrow and select one of the part numbers versus having to type it in see the problem I'm running into now is when there's a new order and a client calls in and says look I would like the book on how to mow your lawn well I understand the book title that's easier to remember than part numbers so what I'll do is when I create a combo box here I'll also in addition to the part number add over to the side the title of the book so I can still enter into the field store in the field the part number but have show up over to the right what that part number is it's you know how to mow your lawn 10-352-HC if that's what it is combo boxes are really easy to create the challenge comes in is when the challenge is is coming to understand your form and how you want to relate this combo box so let me go ahead and right click of course I can right click anywhere in a blank area on the form and go to the design view first of all I want to get rid of my part number label and text box I'll go ahead and click and drag a marquee around or marquee my boxes there and hit the delete key on the keyboard first of all I need to know what this form is based upon is it based upon a table a query I can double click that little box in the upper left hand corner it opens up the property sheet with the form selected and you can see right here form or I can click on the drop down arrow and select form it has the form selected and this forms record source or it's based upon the sales profit query so when I double click and open that up that's what it is now when I create the combo box whatever I do I do not want to base it upon a query the part number within the query and the reason why is because the part numbers can be duplicated here several times because I can have different companies on different transaction dates purchase the same part number or the same book title and I don't want to come back here to my form in the form view click on the drop down arrow and have that same part number listed 20 gazillion times that's not going to work that's why I base my combo box in this example upon the book project table because it has the part number listed only once okay in addition it's important when I go back to my query that the form is based upon and I right click it and I go to the design view let me close out of the property sheet it's based upon these three tables now forms and reports can only be based upon one table if you're going to do it directly if you want to base it upon two or more tables then it has to go through a query because in a query we can add all the tables we want as long as they have data joins or temporary relationships between all the related fields like part number to part number and then customer ID to customer ID in addition to that my combo box being based upon the books project table will also be able to relate because the record source of the form has the book project table within it okay so I'm going to go ahead and close out of here close out of that table and let's get started come up here click on the design tab go to the controls group and then click on the combo box button it's really easy to create these again it's just understanding the relationship of your form what it's based upon and, and what table you want to tie your combo box to a little secret here when I hover over the grid after I clicked on the combo box I get a little cross right well everything to the left of the cross wherever I click is going to add the label and to the right is going to add the combo or the drop down box so I don't want to click over here because the label will just be off the screen so I'll do it right about here click on it and it begins the wizard how do you want your combo box to get its values well I want it to get the values from a table or a query well I don't recommend queries because again I don't in this case I don't want the part number listed 20 gazillion times so it'll be based upon a table click next what table it's gonna be the book projects table because remember the part number is only listed once and that works great for me click next now what fields do I want to show in the combo box when I click on that drop down arrow I want the part number of course and also the title of the book click next how do I want this sorted when I click on that drop down arrow I want it sorted by part number click next and then it says how would you like the columns in your combo box in other words I don't want to hide the key column the key column is the one that has these the primary key assigned to it the part number is unique and to do a best fit I can just hover in between these two column header labels and double click really fast and it auto fits it to the part number column And if I go to the outside and double click really fast at the edge of the book title column header here it does an auto fit and takes it to the longest book title here which is I think through blogging in any case when I do the best fit that means that when I click on the drop down arrow I'll be able to see all this instead of having it cut off so I'll double click to do a best fit click next when you select a row in a combo box you can store a value from that row in your database now choose a field that uniquely identifies that row 
Well, it's the part number. Nine times out of ten, or the majority of times, it's going to be the uh, field that has the primary key assigned to it, a unique field, and it's the part number field. Again, it's pulling from the book project table. Click Next. OK, so that's the unique identifier of that row. Now, when you click on that drop down arrow and you select a part number, do you want to be able to store that value? In other words, it would be the same as not having a combo box and just a text box and typing it in. Of course I want to store it. I mean, the whole purpose of this is not having to type it in. So yes, I do want to store, when I click on the drop down arrow and select the part number, to store that it within the table. And where are you going to store it? Well, it's going to be stored in the part number. Because remember, this combo box is based upon the part number with, off to the side, the part number's book title or its corresponding book title. Click Next and then go ahead and name it. Click Finish, and that's it. Let's take it for a test drive. Click on the View button here. First of all, you can see that the part number, normally if I just had the text box part number, it would be listing the part number here, but because I have a drop-down arrow, for this order transaction, order ID 30, it's displaying the part number 10-352-HC. When I click on the drop-down arrow, it's business card to postcard marketing. In any case, that's what it is. When I click and go to the next record, when I click on the drop down arrow and I want to find out what uh, part number 10526 is, it was highlighted down here Fun Vacations for Families. Okay, go to the next one and, well, it's gardening being simple and so on. You see, if I had this combo box based upon the query, when I clicked on the drop down arrow, I would have gardening made simple probably listed 20 times if 20 people purchased it, and that's what my query was based upon was keeping track of that, so that was good that I didn't do that. So when it comes to viewing records within the form, it's great because I can click and go from one record to the next here, and it acts just like a text box. It just shows me the part number that's associated with that order, okay? And if I wanted to, I could click on the drop-down arrow and find out what that part number is, the book title. And probably even more helpful is that when I click on the Create New Blank Record button here, and let's create a new one, Let's do 32758, maybe a returning client ID here. Date of sale, we could say was the 13th. The part number, or the client says, look, I want something about gardening. There's something, a book title there. Just click on the drop down arrow. Was it gardening main simple or landscaping like the pros? They can tell you. I can go ahead and select it. It stores the part number value, but I benefit from this because if I don't remember what the part number is tied to, at least I can look it up over the, on the right hand side, the associated title of the book. So there we go. And we can say we sold 20 books here. And then it, it automatically does a calculation, the retail and the wholesale price here. And then shift enter to save my work. One last thing I want to do is I can convert this combo box to a list box. Instead of clicking on the drop down arrow, I can actually have it listed all out before me. Of course, it's going to take up a lot of space. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and right click a blank area, change it to the design view. And then all I have to do is to change this from a combo box to a list box is right click on the combo box, go to change to, and say it's a list box. It's going to pop it down here. It's going to need some room because it's not going to have a drop down arrow. It's actually going to start listing them all here. So I may want to give it some space. Let me go ahead and try to move this around. Let me click and drag that up out of the way. Then marquee this and hit my down arrow key several times. Give it some space here. Then click and drag and marquee those two. Bring them back, and we want to click off in a blank area. Well, let me show you what it looks like first here. Let me go back to my view here, and that's what a list box looks like. It's actually listing it, but because it's so crunched up, I have to scroll. That's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click back to the design view, and let me stretch the list box out just a little bit over here and down, so hopefully you don't have to scroll as much. And then back to my view here. There we go. So when I go from record to record, backwards or forwards, so when I'm on the order ID of 69, it actually has selected as that order the basic medical billing. When I click on the new record button, I can just go ahead and enter in all the information and then just select whatever book that they purchased. And if I need to, I can scroll down just a little bit here. So it may work for you if you don't have that many part numbers or that many records to go through to select to convert this to a list box. Or to keep the form tight and concise, just have the combo box drop down arrow. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.